Our guest tonight is former Miami Herald General Counsel Sam Torelli. You're watching Over the Top News. Much to our president's dismay, the NFL is back, and we are celebrating with a story of triumph, perseverance, and so much more. The Cleveland Browns ended their 17-game losing streak, but it was in the most Browns way possible, a tie. The last time the Cleveland Browns, also known as the Cleveland Brown Bags, won a game was December 24, 2016. Just for some context, that was before the Tide Pod Challenge, Obama was still the president, and I looked like this. Well, I guess I kind of looked the same. Anyways, back in August, real-life Tony Stark, Elon Musk, tweeted that he might take Tesla private at $420 a share. And last week, he did this. How does that work? <laughs> do people get upset at you if you do certain things? There's uh, tobacco and marijuana in there. That's all it is. Let me be blunt, it's pretty clear that Elon Musk is working towards a greener future. And it's time for Hurricane Florence and the machine. The National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration released this footage from inside the storm. Hurricane Florence and his pals Isaac and Helene are raging in the tropics, just like it's spring break 08. Woo! But if you are in the path of these storms, Please stay safe and listen to your local officials. Our lead story tonight is an anonymous New York Times op-ed bashing the Trump administration. Many White House officials have been quick to deny any involvement in the letter. Yes or no, did you write the article, Ambassador? Other cabinet members, so what's the answer? No. Of course I didn't do it. Of course I didn't do it. And, and I, I'll answer your other question directly because I know someone will say, gosh, you didn't answer the question. It's not mine. This week, I was joined by the former Miami Herald General Counsel, Sam Torelli, to discuss the piece and see if just maybe we can narrow down the witch hunt. All right, thank you so much for joining me today. My pleasure. My first question about the op-ed. Did you write it? You found me out. <laughs> I am the deep state operative inside the Trump White House who wrote that column. No, of course not. <laughs> I didn't write it, and I've never been in the Trump White House. So, you didn't write it. I didn't write it, at least I don't think I wrote it. So we can cross two names off the list, but the witch hunt goes on. So in your best opinion, who do you think wrote it? My fantasy? In your fantasy, your dreams. Melania Trump. <laughs> now that would be incredible to me. I think that would be the game changer, the dark horse yes, I think we all be. need. Yes. But that's your fantasy, that's your dream. What do you... Generally, actually, if I think. really had to guess, I, I don't think it was the work of a single person. I, I think you might have a couple of people in the White House, you, you never know, who share these feelings. And it, it could have been the work of, of a, a, a small group. It, it could have been the work of any number of people. It, it could have been the work of the outgoing council. It could have been the chief of staff. It could have been an ambassador. It could have been any number of people. And yes, it could even have been the vice president with some help. So I'm glad you brought that up, the vice president, because in my research and my investigations that I'm doing on the side, he's my number one candidate. I've seen some of his old speeches and he uses a certain word a lot. And I'm gonna read a quote from the op-ed itself. Uh, it says, we may no longer have Senator McCain, but we will always have his example, a lodestar for restoring honor to public life. So this word, lodestar, it's a stalwart of, of uh, Pence's speeches. Just take a look for yourself. And so vigilance and resolve will be our lodestar. We will continue to act with vigilance and resolve as our lodestar. Must again be our lodestar. So you heard it yourself. Our vice president loves to use the word lodestar. But what the hell does Lodestar even mean? Well, and this assumes that he knows what it means <laughs> and that it's not just his speechwriter who likes to use the word. It's not an uncommon word, particularly amongst lawyers. It's often used in damage issues where you're using a Lodestar to calculate damages. A Lodestar is sort of a guiding principle. 
uh, your, your guiding light. Uh, and, and that's what it, it's used here. Now, the fact that it appears in this column may seem like a clue, but it could also be something that's thrown in there to throw us off the trail. It may or may not have been the vice president. There are words in there that sound like it could be Huntsman, the ambassador, or it could be the chief of staff, or it could be Mattis, or any number of other, or other people. It really doesn't tell us anything other than, yeah, that word is there. So you think it could be a setup? They're trying to get, whoever wrote it wants to put it on Mike Pence? Or, or it could be that uh, whomever wrote it, or if a, a small group of people wrote it, they wanted to deflect attention from any single person. I don't know. Uh, it's a pretty well-written column, and, and let's face it, uh, it's better written than I would have expected <laughs> from a lot of people in the White House. I, I totally agree, but your time with the Herald, did you ever have a similar situation where you published something like the Times did that was this controversial? We didn't publish any anonymous columns. We have worked with confidential, anonymous sources all the time, and any time you work with a source like that, you have to be very careful. You vet the source pretty carefully. Who is the source? What's the source's motive? What's the source's background? Because you're putting your credibility on the line by using that confidential source. Same thing with a column that's written by someone who's, or who's anonymous. So you've worked with confidential sources before, but in this particular scenario, say you are in the shoes of the times. Would you have published it? Absolutely, not a question. I, I would have done the, the review process. I would have vetted it very carefully as they said they have and as I'm certain they have. You, you don't just take anything that comes over the transom. Uh, but after I've done my review and I've satisfied myself that it's, it is what it appears to be, yes, I would have published it without a question. What are some things that in this review process would say, you know what, this is a, a sham, we're not publishing this? You know, if, if it came through too many intermediaries so that you didn't have a, a real strong chain of custody to be able to tie it back to somebody who is a senior White House official, if it came from somebody who appeared to be doing nothing more than settling a political grudge, that's something different. But if it comes from somebody who appears to be in a position to know, who has a legitimate concern about being identified, and if it raises issues of public importance, then yes, that's what we're supposed to do in the media. We are supposed to publish that. All right, well, thank you so much. You're Hopefully, welcome. they find something out. Maybe we'll find something out in our own investigations. And maybe it was Melania. <laughs> that would be a dream come true for both <laughs> you and me. Yes. All right. Thank you. And our final story tonight. A charter school in Georgia has reintroduced paddling children. And no, this isn't a kayaking academy. The Georgia School of Innovation and Classics definitely favors the classics. Thank you so much for watching Over the Top News. I hope you enjoyed the episode, and I'll see you next time.